Hello, and welcome to another edition of True Audio Files. My name's Jim Carter. Um, so today, I'm going to talk about uh, the Sign of the Times singles. Uh, that is Prince's album, Sign of the Times, and the singles that came off of it. Primarily because they just released a um, reissue box set of just the singles that they limited to uh, 1,987 copies, so 1987, which is the year that it came out. It's all in preparation for the new box set that's coming out uh, for Sign of the Times, a super uber deluxe version, which is basically going to have, I want to say there's like 65 or, or more unreleased tracks on it. So, And this box set actually has uh, some unreleased uh, stuff on it also. So uh, well, I'll start off by showing you it. Uh, but basically what I'm going to do is I also have a couple of the original singles, when they, the ones that came out when the album first came out, too. And I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison between the two and see which one was better and see if they did a good job with this set. Uh, unfortunately, unless you want to play it pan, arm, and a leg for this box set, you're probably not going to be able to grab one, though, unfortunately. But uh, because they basically sold out the first day that... Uh, the Prince estate put them on sale. So uh, they were, uh, but this is the box front side here and the back side. And then the, uh, uh, the, bo the, the label, if you will. Um, basically they were pressed in Detroit by third man records. So the uh, pressing plant that is owned by Jack white, uh, who usually do good stuff. Let's see if that's the case here. Uh, it also came with a randomly placed uh, picture. This is the one that I got. There were uh, about six others that came out. Uh, the download card, which is right here, uh, for the singles if you wanted to get the MP3 versions. So, uh, so, but let me run you through what singles are included, and I'll show you what they look like because they are a special colored vinyl. They're all going to be the same from a color perspective. Oh, and there, as I said, there there was a limited release of 1,987. And they were all numbered. And I was a fortunate person to get number 114 out of 1,987. So pretty awesome. Very excited about that. So first one is Prince, Sign of the Times, the song. Uh, most of these, the, there is a difference between the original, or I should say the album version and the single. The single is usually an edited version. But And one of the great things, if you don't know much about Prince, is this is the second, uh, the back side, because it's talking about the uh, side B, which is la la la, he he he. And that song is about what I was about to talk about, is that many of Prince's uh, singles had unreleased tracks on as a side b so that song is not available on an album unless you count some uh later uh compilation albums but the uh the all of the records were pressed on really cool orange it's kind of an orange marble it's kind of hard to see but the labels uh, mimic what uh what they were when uh when they were released back in 1987, the Paisley Park logo. Although I will admit they're not exactly the same, because uh, well, like uh, I'll show you a quick example of what I'm talking about here. If I can grab my <laughs> my other copy, uh, they're a little they're a little darker, or, or in, at least this one is. And uh, the original had a UPC code on it. So there you go. There's the two, basically the same sing single, but you know, the reissue versus the original. So, um, so that's that. Let me put this back in the sleeve so I don't damage it because I don't want to do that because these things are like gold right now and uh, I don't want to damage them in general anyway. So, uh, so that was Sign of the Times. And then we have If I Was Your Girlfriend, which side B was Shockadelica. Again, another uh unreleased song or side b that uh is not available on an album then you got the look which was one of the one of the more popular songs besides sign of the times this one ha had a side b called housequake which actually is on the sign of the times album so that really wasn't anything different um then we've got 
Uh, I could never take the place of your man, a great song. Uh, and unfortunately, again, this one had another song that was already available on the album itself, Hot Thing. This is a recreation of the uh, of a single, a promo single. Uh, the, the promo single, to my knowledge, never had a cover, but basically it was a single that had Hot Thing as side A and B, the edited version. So um, that was released. I, I know I have the CD version. I don't think I've got the C, the uh, the vinyl version. I'm pretty sure I don't because I would have would have probably compared it. Uh, another one is another promo that, uh, again, I don't think it had an actual cover, um, but for the song The Cross, which is a really cool song, and if you're a religious person, you would probably like it a lot more too. Um, and then the song Adore, which again is another song. It's kind of the slow R&B ballad on, on Sign of the Times, which is uh, somewhat standard for a Prince album to have at least one of those. Um, but really cool pictures, and again, this was another one which was a promo that I don't believe ever had a, uh, a picture sleeve with it. So, And then the last one is Witness for the Prosecution, which is a side B, or not, I'm sorry, not a side B. This is one that was previously unreleased. There's two versions of it. There's a version, uh, the first version is one that he performed with Prince and the Revolution. Uh, and then, basically, if, if with the, for those of you who don't know much about Prince or the album Sign of the Times, it was the first album after he broke si uh, Prince and the Revolution up. So, But anyways, uh, Witness for the Prosecution version 1 and version 2 are on that. And version 1 is with Prince and the Revolution. And version 2 is him solo. So... I, I, I didn't do the research before I did this video, which I know is just so uncommon for me, but I believe that the first version is available on, I want to say the Crystal Ball box set that came out that maybe one day will be reissued as a three-disc set of kind of previously unreleased stuff that he put out after he was released from his contract with Warner Brothers back in the mid-90s. So... Anyway, uh, I showed you the, the original Sign of the Times. I don't have the picture sleeve for that. But then this is the, uh, the original of You Got the Look. And then the original for If I Was Your Girlfriend and Housequake. Uh, I'm not sure. That's not Housequake. That's uh, Shockadelica. Um, both of those are on standard black vinyl. All right, so if I probably should uh, stop right here and actually talk a little bit more in detail about the packaging for those that, that care. Uh, you know, the box is kind of nice, you know, you've got, it's actually got embossed heart on the back and the embossed peace sign on the front. Uh, pretty thick stock cardboard for the box itself. Uh, as you saw, the box was numbered, uh, like I said, 114. Uh, the only thing, if I have to nitpick about the box is, as you can see, it's actually too thick for the uh, singles themselves. I wish they cut it down by maybe a quarter or a half an inch so they didn't flop around as much. Um, but, you know, the, the records themselves are pretty thick. Uh, I don't know if they're 180 gram, but they're pretty thick. But even more importantly is the, uh, the singles sleeves are definitely a much thicker stock than what you would typically get on a single, or at least the singles when they originally came out. It's a, a thick card stock as opposed to the, I guess for lack of a better term that I can think of, uh, like magazine sleeve style or quality um, stock on the original releases. So now uh, we'll talk a little bit about sound quality. Uh, I played every single that, uh, like I, I think I showed you, I had three of the original singles. So I played all three back to back between the, you know, like for example, I play the Sign of the Times single side A, uh, from the original and the side A from the reissue, then side B, uh, original versus reissue, so on and so forth. And there's definitely a difference. And I would say the dif biggest differences that I found are on the original reissue, uh, I'm sorry, original reissues, on the original uh, issue ones, um, on the original uh, issue singles, I found them to be you know, a little more smiley face EQ, so there was a little more trouble. Um, I, probably not. Uh, it's probably more more like the uh, the uh, EQ. I'm sorry, the mid range was scooped out a little bit because 
I don't know. And the, the base was probably very similar. Uh, there's probably just a little bit more of a high-end boost on, on the originals. And But the one big thing that I noticed on the base was that the base on the originals definitely was deeper. Um, and it was very noticeable on my system because I've got a system with a, a really nice sub that can play really deep. And uh, I could notice that instantly. And, you know, I would say that you know, the, the new reissues definitely have a warmer feel to them because they definitely have more mid-range to them. And the bass is decent. The uh, the treble isn't boosted. So, you know, it's probably a more neutral sound to the to the records. So from a sound a quality perspective, one of the things that I, I did I, I want to make note of, which I thought was really odd, is um, it seemed like at least my copies the sound was a little bit panned to the left all sound so some the stuff that's supposed to be dead center seemed just a hair off to the to the left for some reason i'm not really sure why that was but it seemed to be like that on on all all of the singles that i had uh, as far as the pressing goes some of them were very good uh, i think like sign of the times uh you got the look. I can never take the place of your man. Those ones actually had a decent sound quality, and actually, to um, and 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 when I say sound quality, I mean pressing quality, I should say. So you know, surface noise was kind of at a minimal, and overall, you know, that that didn't seem like there were any defects or very many defects. But when you started getting into uh, ones like the cross and hot thing, and um, to a lesser extent, uh, witness for the prosecution. Um, there was definitely, uh, more surface noise and it definitely became really evident on hot thing, uh, the hot thing single and the cross slash a door. So I was a little bit disappointed in that because I've generally gotten really good pressings, at least good to really good pressings from, uh, third man records almost every time I've gotten them. I can't think of a bad pressing I've gotten from them, but a couple of these I would, I would, uh, say are borderline bad just because some of them have just a quite a bit of noise even after doing a thorough cleaning of all of them so but back to actual sound quality not pressing quality uh, you know both of them had pretty similar sound stages in terms of placement of everything besides the slightly panned to the left stuff and both of them had a, a similar uh, wide wide and deep sound stage so on that aspect they were very close the and being able to kind of differentiate between instruments again it was really close um the the originals seemed to be a little bit more dynamic to me and, and that just might be because they had the deeper bass and uh, a little bit of a uh high high frequency boost to them so that just may have contributed to that uh um to me but uh I liked them for that reason. Although I will freely admit, I would say if the reissues had that deeper bass and maybe a little bit more, more, uh, high frequency, and it didn't even need to be all that much more, just a little bit, not as much as the originals, they would have been easily my favorite and easily would have picked them over the originals. That being said, I, I, I like, I like the reissues from a sound quality, EQ sound quality perspective. Uh, not as happy with them as from the uh, pressing side of things. Uh, the originals seem a little bit more punchy to me um, because of the deepness of the bass and uh, the airiness of the high end because there's probably a little bit of a high end boost to them. But, uh, you know, I don't think you'll be disappointed with the, the originals if you get those. I personally have a slight preference to them. I would lean more towards them. I mean, I would say if you lean more towards a more neutral sound to what you listen to, I think you'd probably appreciate the uh, box set better. And I'm assuming not every single uh, record that was pressed is going to have the surface noise issues that I had. Uh, and I, I mean, they weren't, you know, super bad. It's not like they're the worst I've ever heard, but it was a little bit disappointing for the price that I paid. Um, and I paid just whatever the, the, the regular price was on the Prince Estate 
uh, website when they were available. Uh, I didn't pay like eBay and Discog pricing, which I've heard, you know, somewhere in the vicinity of two, three hundred dollars and up for these now, uh, where they sold originally for a hundred dollars. And a hundred dollars for seven singles, I think is a little much. Uh, you know, you're paying a little bit more for the, the, the packaging and the the rare picture and the colored vinyl and and uh, all that kind of stuff and you know it they do sound decent i think all the tracks to my knowledge i'm about 99 percent sure are all going to be available on the sign of the time super deluxe box set that's coming out they might even all be available on the regular deluxe set that are going to be coming out next month so you know if you uh if you're a Prince collector and you have to, if you if you really really wanted this set and you were going to be getting it because you wanted to listen to them, I don't think you'll be disappointed uh, unless assuming that you you get some decently pressed ones, which I'm sure there are plenty out there that are. Uh, and like I said, none of these are horrible. Uh, but for those of you who are you know a Prince fan and a Sign of the Times fan, but not a huge, not huge huge fan. You know, I would say just hold off until the box set comes out or the you know the deluxe set comes out because you're going to get all these these tracks on on there. Because um, to re-emphasize, re these most of these are single edit uh, versions of the song, so they'll be shorter versions of the songs that are what then are what on the uh, on the original album. And I know I know the deluxe set is going to have all of the single edits and the 12-inch single remixes and extended versions and things like that. Um, not sure if they're going to have the bonus tracks like um, Witness to the Prosecution, for example, though. So that's the only one I'm not 100% sure of. But, you know, Super Deluxe set will, will have that. So if you're a huge Prince fan um, but just don't want to spend the money on this box set, they will all still be available on that. My assumption is, is they're going to be the same mastering that you're getting on this box set too. So that's my take on the set. And I, I uh, promised some of my friends out there that I would uh, review this and let them know how it sounded. So there you have it. I know that I have some followers that are not Prince fans. So I apologize to those that uh, that aren't. So they, uh, I guess I'm not going to have them <laughs> view this video. But I would love to hear your take on this, especially if you have the set. I'd love to hear, you know, what you thought about your set. And uh, if you liked what you saw here, please like the video. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe to my videos. And if you want to know when my new videos come out, please hit that alert button. So that's my video for the week. Thank you very much, and you have a great day.